Hi everyone, welcome to 4 Teachers and welcome to a brand new video. Before properly starting today's video, I just wanted to take a really quick minute to say thank you to all the new people who have subscribed to 4 Teachers. I checked my YouTube analytics app this morning and it let me know that 11,000 people have now subscribed to this channel and for me personally that feels like a really really big achievement. I'm so proud of the community that has been created here. It just feels really really nice to have that recognition even if it is just a number. It feels really nice to know that the videos are being watched and enjoyed and are making a difference to some people and their training and I'm really really proud of myself. What I've started trying to do is I've been trying really really hard to make a note of questions that I've been asked over on Instagram or questions that I get asked in the comments of these videos and any questions that are kind of recurring and they keep coming up quite a lot I'm going to do my best to address on videos and try and make topics about that because I feel as though maybe one person's question or a couple of people's questions might be relevant for lots of different people at different stages of their teacher training. So the question that I was asked directly over on Instagram was do I think that I went into teaching too young and what are the pros and cons of going into teaching at an early age? And I guess sort of what age would I recommend starting your teacher training, which maybe I don't have a complete answer for, but I do have some pros and cons uh, based on my own experience of my teacher training at quite a young age. And there are lots of reasons why it was a really good choice. There are also some reasons why maybe it wasn't the best choice. So I'm going to kind of balance it out in this video and hopefully it will give you some ideas if you are considering doing your training yourself and you're not sure if now is the right time or if you should wait. Just to give you a little bit of background knowledge about myself, I applied for my teacher training in 2009 which is such a strange thought now because that is a really really long time ago and I was formally accepted to start the course in 2010. I was 18 years old when I started my teacher training and I was 21 years old when I was full-time in the classroom with a class of 30 plus children. That's how quick kind of the journey happened for me. One minute it was 2009 and I was putting together a personal statement and getting some experience in the classroom and next thing you know I was doing placements and it felt like it went very very quickly and I was in the classroom as well. So I'm going to kind of talk you through those stages and explain the pros and cons of each stage. I know I've said it before on the channel but just for the sake of anyone new watching, the course that I studied was BA Honours Primary Education with QTS at Sheffield Hallam University. Uh, I was a 2013 graduate and the course was three years inclusive of my QTS which is qualified teacher status. So you don't need to do a PGCE on the top of that, it's included because you do a lot of uh, placements, so it's included within that course. I will maybe post the course details down below if you are curious to find out more. So I guess the first thing worth noting about my journey into teaching is that I started university age 18 and I was also doing teacher training as a course. Now the two don't really go perfectly hand in hand. I feel as though for me university was a really big self-discovery couple of years and for me it was about friendships, it was about music, it was about the way I styled myself and, and kind of developing everything together that felt like my personality. I feel as though at high school you do a lot of copying and imitating other people and your friendship group is very much based on what your surroundings look like whereas when you get to university it's your chance to discover yourself and uh, dress in different ways and go out to cool places and meet people from different walks of life and it's a little tricky to imagine doing something like teaching when you're also trying really really hard to discover yourself as a person. There's a lot of ways in which I kind of wanted to express myself and I really wanted to dye my hair crazy colours and get lots of piercings and just be like a regular 18 year old that's just got to university and is really excited to explore the world without living at home for the first time. And I guess when you do teaching that can be a little difficult because you are expected to be quite formal when you go to your teaching placements and while all of your friends might be out partying and drinking all night and getting in at four o'clock in the morning, you might be getting up at six o'clock in the morning to travel to a placement school and with that comes a certain responsibility that you have to kind of uphold, that like you can't be turning up to your placement school hungover, you can't walk straight from your night out into a taxi and go straight to the school and start teaching, it just, it doesn't work like that. It's really difficult when the people around you are able to do things that you're not. For example, if you were out with your friends the night before, uh, there's a chance you can still make your way through a seminar or a lecture if you've had some drinks the night before or you've been out, but you certainly can't go into a school and work 
with a class of 30 children it just it doesn't work there are a lot of things that I had to say no to there are things that I couldn't go along to another point is at university I was part of the snow sports society snow sports society um, which was the best decision I've ever made joining that society was everything to me it was like my family and my friends and it was the best decision ever however I couldn't go on the ski trip because it coincided with one of my teaching placements and I was absolutely gutted and I did try talking to the university but they said look you've chosen teaching um, you know that it's a demanding course you know that you can't take time out of things like teaching placements so everyone went on this amazing ski trip and I didn't there was quite a few things like that that I did miss out on and I did kind of get a little down about that but at the same time I actually have no regrets at all I could have done a longer course and that would have freed me up a little bit more my timetable would have been less demanding I could have done the four years and for a few years after my training I looked back and kind of regretted not doing that but I've kind of gone full circle now and there are reasons and I will get to them in a minute why I do actually still think now that it was the best choice so it's gonna go full circle <laughs> but at the time it felt like I was missing out but now I am where I am I can say with confidence that I am getting more opportunities now as a result of starting the course at a younger age. So we're going to go full circle with this and let me explain. I had to figure out a way to find a balance which was really really difficult, however I feel as though I did find it probably mostly by my third year. I had to make a few really smart decisions, for example choosing to live with a smaller group of people rather than a great big party house um, simply because waking up early for placements was going to be really difficult if I was surrounded by a lot of people. So when I qualified in 2013 I like to think that this is a really great achievement of mine. For example I was only 21 years old and I had this piece of paper that had my qualification on and I remember my mum telling me that nobody could take that qualification away from me. It was mine, it was my achievement. I guess there's probably some ways you can lose your qualification but in theory like it was mine it was my achievement it was something that I had got and it was part of me thinking back now to what I knew age 21 and how much I've changed in the last seven years uh, it's huge it's you know I was such a different person back then and to imagine that that young version of myself was able to gain that qualification is it's not a miracle <laughs> because I managed it but it was hard and it was tough and it was testing and I had to grow as part of the course and find a balance and all of these different skills that you don't really give yourself enough credit for while you're doing them you just get stressed and tired and exhausted and overwhelmed um, but on reflection you can look back and you can think yeah I did that and I and I managed it when I started actually teaching and I was in the classroom and I was 21 years old I did feel very very young still uh, I do look quite young as well I think and at the time I felt like I looked even younger I was always trying really hard to wear smart things to try and make me look more mature and I used to put my hair back and maybe be less expressive with the way I dressed because I had an idea of how teachers were supposed to look and I would dress quite smart and try and convince people that I was more mature than I was. I would also say that based on the fact that I was 21 I felt as though a lot of the things I was teaching I was learning alongside the children. I mean I went to school myself, I know a lot about the world, I read a lot, I read a lot of articles, I have discussions and I talk to people but there was no way that I could know everything about everything I was teaching and if I was teaching a brand new topic on something that I was completely unfamiliar with I had to do my research, I had to spend a lot of time figuring out the subject knowledge that I was going to need to actually successfully teach that to my students and a lot of the time it felt like I was just learning with them and in a way that's kind of nice it's nice to not just tell children the facts all the time it's nice to let them discover things and it was really nice to kind of learn on the job with that one I suppose taking into account the first couple of years that I spent as a teacher I feel as though I was learning about life at a very fast pace the skills that I was developing as a school teacher were completely invaluable for example my social skills my problem solving my general knowledge was rising at um, a pace that I feel as though was quite high and learning a lot about work working with people as part of a team, uh, leading presentations and projects that maybe I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do otherwise. So I feel as though my kind of skill set was rising quite quickly 
perhaps as a result of doing this at such a young age, so that could be considered a pro as well for teaching at a younger age. Another point that kind of counters that, so it's kind of a con rather than a pro, is the fact that you feel as though you're battling for respect a lot of the time. Uh, maybe battling isn't the right word, but you're having to kind of prove your worth as a teacher. If, for example, you wanted to apply for some kind of leadership position, you kind of have to prove that you've got the skill set required for the job. I would say though if you start showing interest in that kind of role as soon as you start at a new school then hopefully the leadership team will acknowledge your abilities and notice that you're trying really hard to get yourself onto that level. I had just started to be offered things like subject lead at the school I was working at in my third year. I was also mentoring a lot of teaching students so I had been acknowledged despite the fact that I started quite young and if I had stayed at that school I don't know where that opportunity would have taken me. Perhaps I would have maybe found myself a role in the next couple of years that I feel as though would be considered, I guess, a promotion in the teaching world. But I didn't, I moved on because I wanted to try working at a few different types of schools before I settle anywhere. When I first decided I wanted to teach, which was in 2009, I knew straight away that my end goal was going to be to teach abroad. So this was always something that I was continuously working towards. And I knew that in order to get to where I wanted to be, the requirement is usually that you've got a few years experience teaching in the UK first. Most international schools abroad will consider you after two or three years of experience, maybe one, some of them, but most of the time you need to have taught in the UK for a few years. I started applying to teach abroad quite early because I really, really wanted to do that. And I ended up teaching at an international school in Hong Kong and I'm now on my second international school in Hong Kong. So I decided to move from one to the next after three years. So I want to experience as many different sort of types of schools as I can in order to learn more about myself as an educator and in order to just learn from different people because I do think that I learn the most when I observe other people's practice as well. A lot of the people in the same age bracket as me that didn't go into teaching but decided to take a gap year before they started their study were always people that I envied and I was always a little bit sad that I never got the opportunity to do that. So I'd never been to like Thailand for a holiday and I'd never traveled around uh, Southeast Asia, which I know is a really popular thing to do on your gap year. So I feel like I was sad that I missed out on that. However, just to go full circle, now that I do live in Hong Kong, I've had so many opportunities to travel because Hong Kong is so closely connected to so many different countries. Uh, I've been to Japan, I've been to Korea, I've been to Vietnam, Cambodia. I'm so grateful for those opportunities that I have had as a result of my geographical teaching location. And now I realize that perhaps my time for a gap year wasn't when I was maybe 18. My time is kind of now and even though I'm not on a gap year, I'm still teaching full time, my summer times are free for me to travel and it's kind of like the best of both worlds. I would also say that I am currently very happy with where I am in my teaching journey. I feel as though I've had quite a lot of success in the time that I've been teaching, but I'm also equally driven and looking forward to what might be coming up next as part of my journey. So I feel as though I'm in quite a good place and I hope that anyone who has been watching this right now is thinking about their own teaching ideology and where they want to head with their own career as well. And I really hope that maybe just listening to me talk you through those stages and the different kind of brackets that have got me up to here now has been useful for you. If it has been useful, please consider letting me know in the comments down below. Please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to 4Teachers and checking out 4Teachers over on Instagram where I post lots of teaching updates and questions and pictures and tips, tricks and advice. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you on the next video.